Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's take a look at 10 ways to use the Touch Bar on your MacBook Pro. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 800 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So some people really love the Touch Bar on the MacBook Pro. Others don't find it very useful. It's been around now for more than 4 years but I think a lot of people haven't taken the time to train themselves to use it and therefore it hasn't become a useful productivity tool for them. So here are 10 things that you can do with the Touch Bar without installing any additional software. Let's start with something simple. When you're editing text, say in an app like Pages, you can use the Touch Bar to style text. So you can see here as I'm typing I have suggestions as to what the next word could be. But if I select text then you can see the Touch Bar changes. And now I've got the ability to easily style text say by making it bold or justifying the text or setting a bullet list style. I can also tap here and then change its style using one of the styles that I've set up for this document. You could also tap here and then select a color. You have basic colors but you could dig down and actually go to some really good color tools like for instance RGB here and set red, green, and blue colors using sliders, even the opacity. Now when you don't have text selected, like you're just typing normally, you won't see it here but if you close the suggestions it actually reveals all this. So you could actually tap and then type something and it will use that style there. Just like using the regular keyboard shortcut or selecting the styles in the right sidebar. How this could be really useful in Pages is that you can get rid of the sidebar for most things. Whereas you may have had this open in the past, you can close it and just concentrate on your writing and then use the Touch Bar to do some styling. And you can see this works in other apps as well. Here you can see I've got the same controls in Mail and here they are in Text Edit in Rich Text Mode. It's also available in the Notes app but you have even more things here like for instance the ability to add check boxes there, the ability to dig into the styles in Notes, you can indent and outdent and you can use the regular styles as well. It will even work in a lot of third party apps like for instance Microsoft Word. Now you may also notice here in Mail there's a button for Emoji. So you can use this to browse Emoji and special characters without having to bring up the special controls that overlay part of the screen. So I can see my recent ones here. I could go in and jump to any category and then I can tap and drag to scroll through them and pick an Emoji that I want to use. This of course is even more useful in Messages. So you can see the Emoji and Special Character Chooser there. Now let's go into System Preferences. This is where you can customize the Touch Bar. So I'm going to go to Keyboard and then under the Keyboard Heading here I've got Touch Bar Shows. And normally you would have it set to App Controls with Show Control Strip. So you could turn off Control Strip on the right so you have all the space for app controls. You can also decide to have something else besides app controls there like the expanded control strip so it acts just like the top row of keys on a regular keyboard. You can also have it show by default the F keys but a really useful thing to do if you use a lot of virtual desktops is Spaces. So now you actually see your Spaces there. Here I've got two desktops and Safari in full screen and you can see how I can easily switch between these using the Touch Bar and these will stay there so I can continue to use them. So if you're not using the Touch Bar for anything else but you use a lot of virtual desktops set it to this and have it be the way that you access all of the different desktops. Now when you go to the Expanded Control Strip setting you get things that look a lot like the keys on a regular Mac keyboard. But you may not actually use these very often. For instance I don't adjust the brightness of the keyboard or the screen that often and I don't use the music playback controls here. But there are a lot of other things that you can put here. You can completely customize it. So I'm going to go to Customize Control Strip and now I can drag a whole different set of things there. First let's get rid of some things. So I'm going to tap here on Brightness and drag it to the trash. Same thing with Keyboard Brightness and same thing with the Music Controls. Now let's go and add some things that I actually could find useful. So for instance I could drag in Spotlight and put it here on the right. I could drag in Do Not Disturb. Let's move that over here a bit. I could put in Night Shift. Maybe I take a lot of screenshots and I could put those in there too. And let's put Notification Center. Maybe put that all the way over here on the right. So I could put the buttons that I use the most. Even a Screen Lock or Sleep button could be really useful depending upon which things you use a lot. 
So you can customize this to be actual controls that you actually use and arrange them as you like instead of just sticking with the default set. And if you ever want to get back to the defaults just drag this default set here down and it will reset everything. Now one of the things you may have seen there when you go to customize a control script is quick actions. Let's add that in here. I'm going to stick it here and let's get rid of keyboard brightness to make room. So before I use that I need to create some quick actions. So you can create those in Automator. So let's go into Automator here and let's do a new document and I'm going to set it up as a quick action and I'm going to make a very simple quick action. I'm going to set it to no input in any application and then I'm going to choose an icon here. So let's choose maybe this little briefcase here uh, and set up a color and I'm going to do launch and look for launch application and drag that over. And I can set this to launch any application I want. Like let's say as an example calculator. And then I will save this quick action as calculator. Now let's close that and let's create a new one. And let's also make a quick action and let's set it to no input any application and let's for an icon choose a compose icon there and set it to some other color like green and I'm going to search for new mail and use a new mail message here and I'm going to leave all this stuff blank. And then I'm going to save call it new email. Now I'm going to quit Automator. Now since I've saved those things as quick actions you should see them here in any application menu under Services. You can see under General you can see those two new things. But you also see them in the touch bar when I tap on Quick Actions. It goes to those two. So now I can launch Calculator or I could compose a new email which will open up the Mail app if it's not already opened and start a new message. I didn't put anything in those blank spaces so it didn't stick anything in there. But I could have actually pre-populated it with something in the subject line or who it's to or something. So in Automator you can continue to create simple quick actions like launching apps and then it will add them when you tap here to see quick actions. Now this could be even more useful if you actually have it show the quick actions by default. So you go and change touch bar shows to quick actions and you can see those things are now there by default. And I could add a whole bunch of them, scroll through them and basically create controls that launch apps, do all sorts of things and that's what's now in the touch bar. You don't need a third party app to do stuff like this. You can do it with Automator and setting your touch bar to quick actions. Do note though that setting your touch bar to showing quick actions seems a little bit buggy. I wasn't able to get it to work until after a restart and I'm still not able to get it to work on another machine. And I've seen a few other people report the same thing. Now let's switch back to using app controls and let's launch Keynote and bring up a presentation. Now you'll see plenty of useful controls here as you select different elements. For instance I can select this text box here and then play around with its opacity, colors, things like that. But when you actually go to play your presentation then the touch bar changes to a way to navigate through the slides. So I can jump around to different slides by tapping in the touch bar. Safari also has some really interesting controls. Here you could see I could tap to enter a website name but when I tap there it actually shows me my favorites. So I can jump even down into folders there to go to favorites or go to a specific website. I could even create a new tab using the touch bar. When you're playing back video in various apps like QuickTime Player here you get a play control that will change to pause but you also get the ability to tap and drag the playback head around to pick a time in the video. This is also true when you're viewing web videos. So here I am at YouTube.com viewing a video and I have playback controls here at the bottom. I could also move around in the video itself inside the YouTube page. And it works on a lot of other sites as well. So here's a fun one that I saved for last. In GarageBand you can use the touch bar as a keyboard. By that I mean a musical keyboard. So here I've just created a new document and I just set the software instrument to just a piano. Now I have various controls here in the touch bar. But if I tap this first item here to switch to a different type of control you can see one of the items I can choose is a little keyboard. When I do that it changes the touch bar to a keyboard. And now I can actually play. It just works if I drag my finger across it. You could go up and down octaves. You can go to scale and then pick a scale to use. So for instance 
we can choose Major Blues instead of just a regular keyboard. And then I could even change the key. So while it's not really something that you're going to play like a regular musical instrument, if you're messing around with a melody it could be easier to use this than to use the keys on the keyboard plus you leave the keys on your keyboard for other shortcuts. So these are just 10 examples of what you could do with the touch bar. What you need to do is look at the touch bar when you're using different apps that you use and see what's there and see how it could be customized. For instance in the Mail app here if I go to View there's Customize Touch Bar and I could change what appears in the touch bar for Mail. Here's the same thing in Safari. If I go to View and Customize Touch Bar in Safari there are different controls that I could then add to the touch bar like a Home button, History, Autofill, Open and Close the Sidebar, things like that. If you take a few minutes to learn how to use the touch bar and customize it for the apps you use it can then increase your productivity in the long term. And If you don't find any app controls useful you could at least set it to show your different desktops or perhaps show custom quick actions so you can get some use out of the touch bar. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the Subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.